Welcome to another indoor unit teardown video. This video documents step-by-step -step the disassembly procedure. I am going to give a detailed narration of what I am doing in each step. First of all, there are two goals in this video. First goal is to gain best access to coil and the fan blades without removing them from the unit. Second goal is to go step further and remove fan blades in order to reach best cleaning results. Remember to like and subscribe to help us make more content Let's begin by raising the front panel by hand. This panel will be typically in a closed position when power is turned off and the locking mechanism we have to access is still hidden behind the panel. Panel is pulled outwards from the top, then panel is pushed upwards. We can hear the gears turning. To pop the hatch, two blue plastic spring action levers are squeezed. These levers prevent panel from opening currently. The blue support arm is tilted, which keeps the panel open. To remove panel completely, there are two locks behind the panel. They need to be rotated into open position. Locks are rotated and they make clicking sound once open. Support arm has to be bent slightly sidewards in order to release the pin. Support is bent with fingers while firmly gripping the panel. Now panel is free. It is put away to a safe location, avoiding any scratches to its front surface. Next is the removal of electrical cover. Unit is of course separated from electrical supply at this point. Box cover is held by single screw. This screw is fine threaded and differs from other screws removed later. Outer shell has connection wires which are now visible and it must be disconnected. Wire is disconnected. Connection has a small tab which must be pressed during pull. Both filters are removed. Small active filter tabs underneath stay with the main filters. Small filters are meant to be cleaned by soaking them in warm water. Even better replaced with new ones purchased from a local dealer. Main louver is rotated by hand. It has small tabs in three locations. These are typically forced to release by pushing the middle attachment point with fingers. Sometimes louver has to be also bent. Then louver is pulled off from its last tab. Same procedure is done to the other louver. This smaller louver is bent more easily. Now when louvers are out of the way, we can see two small covers at the bottom of exhaust outlet. These covers hide the screws we need to remove in order to remove the outer shell completely.
covers are popped open with a small screwdriver. Then both of the screws are unfastened. Outer shell is practically free, but it is still held in place by small plastic tabs. These tabs are located next to the wall, at the top of the unit. If hand fits between ceiling and the top of the unit, it is easiest to lift the plastic upwards from the top grill. If hand does not fit, same result can be achieved by pushing the plastic edge upwards from the bottom of the grill. Grill is lifted, which releases the tabs one by one. Now the outer shell is free and is removed. Congratulations. We have almost achieved the first goal. Coil is readily cleaned at this point, but unfortunately there are finger guards in the exhaust. These guards make it difficult to get close enough to the fan blades in order to clean it well enough. So what we do next is to pop these guards off. However, this is not very simple because they are tightly connected. This connection is released if small screwdriver is wedged between the connection point. Screwdriver is now pushed in place, and with prying motion, the joint snaps free. This is done to the both joints. Once joints are disconnected, the finger guard is easily pulled off from the indoor unit. Let's do the same to the other side. It can be considered that these finger guards are left completely off and not installed back later. First goal is now complete. Professionals often remove the fan blades completely, and this will be the next step. Also, the fan cavity can be cleaned once the fan is out of the way. In this model, the fan blades are quite simple to remove. First, the single connecting screw on the white plastic is removed. Coil is now released, but as we can see, the fan blades cannot be pulled from this small opening. So what is done next is to remove the white plastic. It is held in place by three screws. Next, the plastic has to be wiggled out from its position. This is done with care as the piping on the far end of these individual coil pieces are fragile. If fractured, the refrigeration gas would rush out from this fracture and is practically unrepairable. It takes some wiggling, but eventually plastic is removed. Small bearing housing is keeping the fan blades attached. This housing can be released simply by lifting it upwards. Bearing is now released. Thick grease can be applied into it if the grease looks to be dried up already. Fan blades are now held only by the magnetic coupling at the far end. This means it can be pulled out readily. Coil has to be carefully raised to provide enough clearance for the tubular fan blade assembly. Now this is the final state in this video and next we are going to step into the assembly procedure. Assembling parts back together is practically same as previous steps done in a reverse. The circular end is magnetic. It is important to check that no debris has gotten attached to this end. Any small piece can cause a jam or noise when fan rotates.
fan snaps effortlessly into its correct location. Next, the bushing is put back into its place at the end of fan stud. Interior of the bushing can be lubricated with thick grease if necessary. Plastic end piece is now inserted back in the three screws. without forgetting to put the upward facing screw, which secures the fan assembly. Finger guards are slid into the small holding pins located at upper lip of the exhaust port. Then the lower portions of guards are pushed into the socket, locking it in place. Outer shell is pushed back to its place. On top at the back end, there are several plastic sockets. These sockets keep the cover firmly in its place, but sometimes they need a little help to lock. Don't forget to clip the wire back into the connection. It should require no insertion force and requires correct orientation. Next, the two screws secure the shell and they have these small plastic covers concealing them in place. Small gray louver is pushed into the other socket first, and then the remaining joints are bent slightly. The larger louver is slightly trickier as it does not bend. Electrical cover is slid back on. Remember the wires? If outer shell wires are left disconnected, unit will function, but the front panel will fail to move during power off or on cycles.
front panel is put back into its place by pushing the stud into the lifting mechanism from other end first. Then the remaining end is bent in place. Finally, locks are rotated from both sides to secure the panel. Panel is lowered from its service position. That's it. I hope everything went as planned. If you did find our video helpful, please subscribe and like to help us out.